Welcome, in front of me is a Oppo Reno 6 Pro and today I'll show you how to go through the setup process of this device. So when you put it up for the first time, you'll be presented with, well, this screen right over here where you get to select your language. Now I'll be sticking, sticking with English, so I'm just gonna select next. Then I can select my region. And on the next page, obviously no device can go without it. User agreement, uh, because no one wants to get lawsuits. So obviously you need to select that I have read and agreed to it. And then we can go to the next page, which has user privacy, security and protection which we only have the next option anyway. I have user experience programs. Now this is one of those things that you don't need to agree to, so you can just skip it. And obviously if you want to, you can agree to it. And if you're not sure what it is, go about it and read it. We have connect to a mobile network. So this is by inserting a SIM card or uh, connecting a USIM, no, not a USIM, eSIM. Uh, but I'm not planning to do that at all. So I'm gonna select later. This brings me to the Wi-Fi connection, so here I could connect to Wi-Fi or again just skip it. Now if I skip uh, SIM card and Wi-Fi, I will also lose the ability to log in to Google account throughout the setup process and additionally date and time won't be set automatically. Now all those things can be changed later on in the settings. Um, Wi-Fi assistant. Now this is one of the things that Apple does which I kind of like. So basically what it is, is uh, if you check this on, and you have more than one Wi-Fi connected to your device, it will pick that better one. So if one is kind of slowish or something is maybe just slowing it down at this moment, the device will kind of like gauge into it and then switch to a better one for you. And additionally, if uh, all the Wi-Fi that you have in your area are just out of garbage, I can then check this on to use mobile network instead. Now, this option might be a little bit uh, iffy for some people if your provider doesn't really give you any kind of reasonable amount of gigabytes of uh, mobile data you might want to stay away from this but for everybody who has like five gigs or more uh, probably go for it knock yourself out it should work just fine so anyway let's go to the next page which is the google services so we have google uh, locations uh, scanning and sending user and diagnostic data uh, now just to brief it up, uh, location, basically GPS tracking, scanning, um, allows the device to scan for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, signal, stuff like that, and then sending user and diagnostic data, self-explanatory to be honest, it's just that uh, Google gathers data on you and sends it to itself, so kind of creepy, so no thanks. And from there we can scroll down, select accept to go to the next page, which allows us to set up a screen lock. Now we have a couple different ways, we have password, fingerprint, and uh, face. And this is kind of where I don't like the translation that, that it has been just so half-assed it's almost embarrassing for a device like this. Because password is not a password, it's a damn pin. How idiotic. Uh, it, it literally frustrates me. And if you go into other, uh, like use a different password. Oh, it m makes my blood boil. Um, so uh, in here, uh, we have a couple options like pattern, four digit pin, we have four to 16 digit pin, and then we have the actual password where the only word actually applies to this the feature. So yeah, uh, this is the only password. Um, Apo fix it. Whoever translated it, fire them. It's infuriating that it's still here after years of this device existence. So yeah, um, we have a couple of frustrating uh, translations here. Obviously you can choose uh, pins right here if you want those. And going back, as you can see, we also have the fingerprint. Uh, we also have face recognition. Uh, that's a little bit too much abbreviated. Again, a translation here, uh, not a single crap given here. So yeah, uh, anyway. Finishing this off, uh, fingerprint and face recognition will require pin pattern or password. Uh, so you cannot go about setting one of those or both of them without having a physical way of unlocking the device. Uh, that is due to the fact that if something would happen to your finger or your face, you basically lose access to your device. So there we go. Now I'll just skip this because I don't really feel like protecting it. Or actually, I'm gonna set up a pattern. There we go. Whoop. Whoop. And there we go, now we have a pattern. Now we have recommended auto update overnight. Um, not sure if that should apply to recommended. Obviously it's up to you if you want to update your device overnight or not. 
Uh, but to be completely fair, what will happen is uh, once the device finds an update, because it does scan for it from time to time, uh, once it finds it, it will give you a pop-up that, hey, you have a new update. And then when you say, no thanks, uh, later, uh, the device will repeat that a couple more times, uh, at which point it will be, uh, it will come to this, this conclusion that uh, later is not an option. Uh, you want to completely remove it or something? Uh, yeah, no, we're gonna update when you're not using the device. Screw you. That's kind of how Android works, to be completely honest. So yeah. Um, so honestly here, it doesn't really matter what you select. Uh, at the end of the day, the device will update automatically anyway. So let's go to the next page, which uh, gives us the option to import data. So obviously this will allow you to import data from your old device. Now it does use an application. They have some proprietary application for this, which if you choose to go about it, it will tell you what kind of application you need to download on your old device. And then you will go to this pairing process, which is uh, fairly nicely laid out in their application. And you can choose which content you want to import to the new device. But I'll be setting it up as new, so I'm gonna select next. And this presents me with two different ways of navigating to the device. So we have the navigation buttons, which is the old uh, typical style of like the majority of the devices. And then we have the uh, more modern one, which is the gesture navigation, which I do prefer more. So that's what I'm gonna be sticking with. Now we can select next, which basically welcomes us to our device. So get started and we have access to our home screen. So there we go. So if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.